Hi, I'm Scott Rockman. We're going to take out the Genoa Sun Odyssey 449 today. We're going to put it under sail. We're going to motor. We're going to look at the electronics and put it through its paces. In preparation to leave the dock, I'm going to disconnect the shore power. This has 50 amp service, so I'm going to disconnect two circuit breakers here for the air conditioning and so forth. That's disconnected. I'm going to go out to the dock. I'm going to shut off all the power on the dock and disconnect our shore power cords. And then back on the boat, I'm going to disconnect from the boat itself. I do it in that order so we don't have a situation where we have a hot plug that I'm disconnecting. I like to spin these caps backwards and then I'll push them forward so they have a nice fit, a fitted closure on that plastic on metal connection. I'll take these and put them on the dock. Just remember you don't want to disconnect a hot shore power cord. You want everything turned off. I like to check the engine every time I go out. I mean, you really don't need to, but I like to see what's underneath for any freezer oil or anything like that that's spilled. So I'm looking at this engine and I see that the pan is clean, nothing unusual going on. So in this case, uh, I'm gonna move to the next step, which is checking the oil. So we'll check the oil by removing this hatch. We're in the starboard cabin. And I check my dipstick and we're good. We have exactly a full amount of There's also a uh, antifreeze expansion tank in there, which I could see from the front that will tell me if we have lots of antifreeze. So we're good to go. All my battery switches are on and we're gonna go start the engine. Check it to make sure that my gear is in the middle, which it is. I'm gonna loosen my wheel, test my steering system. And down here we have uh, the start sequence, which is an on button, standard European style on button. And then we have a start key. Start the engine, looking at my oil pressure. My tachometer's good. And down here, I am looking for water coming out and I can hear it splashing out of the muffler. It won't come out at a constant stream. It'll go through a, a muffler, fill up with water, and spurt out like this. And that's what the boat is doing right now. Everything looks good on the gauge. Engine's starting. I'm just going to let it warm up a little bit. Just looking around the deck before we leave, I see my anchor is attached well. I have a small safety line on it. You can decide whether just to use your windlass to hold that or not, but I like to put a small safety line on. Uh, roller furler line looks good, jib looks good, a little bit of a twist here, but that's okay. Decks are clear, no junk on the decks. My forward hatch is closed, which is always a good idea. And I notice that the head hatch here is open. I'm going to close that a little bit. I just don't want a line getting caught on that. So this area all looks good. I'm going to start the day off with these two hatches closed, but once we get sailing, I'm going to open them. Now we're just going to take off the covers for the B&G unit on this boat. There's a control unit here that allows you to move your instrument towards the wheel you're using. And since I'm going to be steering from the starboard side, I face this towards the wheel. This will have all my navigational data, but it also has my depth and the speed. We have a couple more things to remove. There's a multi-display over on the port side. And over here is another multi-display and an autopilot. That's my chain counter for the windlass. And we have the compass. And this compass here. So we're all set with navigation and we're going to put it in the center console here. The B&G unit is touchscreen. Just like using an iPad or an Android, it has the same gestured features. Here we see No Ink, Connecticut, and we have some tracks where we've been before, and we have this triangle as an AIS target. And 
we'll see more of those as the day goes on. We can also just do plus and minus with these buttons rather than using your fingers. And I could also use a dial on the right hand side here. Here we have speed over ground, course over ground, position, depth, and the time that we are uh, at right now. I don't think this is, this is not accurate at the moment. Menus can either be a hard button and choose what you want. This has a 4G radar, which is a very accurate medium range radar that can distinguish two targets standing next to each other. For example, you could have a, a pole marker and a boat next to it fishing and it would show both of those. We have a lot of other features too, including wind plots, some race features. If you have NEMA 2000 hooked up to the Anmar, there's special senders, you can have uh, that dashboard show up as well. The autopilot can also be controlled from this unit or from the remote that's aboard. It's a nice system. Lots of options, lots of alarms if you wish. Uh, very intuitive, very pad-like. Today we'll be following our track that we've sailed before. In here, there's some AIS targets. And we will use the depth here to keep an eye on that. Here you have your GPS strength. Looks like a cell phone that way. You have some floating boxes here that can be added and you can have more floating boxes. Here's an example of AIS. This is the name of the boat. And you can hit a, uh, a button that allows you to see which direction they're moving and where they are going. On the starboard side, we have one of the multi displays. We have boat speed hooked up and depth but this can become many other things. Here we have the wind indicator. Apparent wind, true wind. A compass display, cross track error, course over ground. Bearing to waypoint, of course. A bigger depth display. Boat position, cog, time, sog, bearing to waypoint, estimated time of arrival, distance to waypoint. Then we have our standard highway feature, rudder indicator, you see the red bar moving on the bottom. That's handy to know when you're centered, and we are centered right there. And back to where we started. On the other side, we have a control for the autopilot with the auto button being very prevalent and some dodge buttons or course adjustments with a standby button. This is also repeated on the multifunction display. Up here we have the bow thruster that works by putting down both buttons at once and then a light will light up allowing you to maneuver the bow thruster. We have a chain counter and an automatic up-down control for the windlass. The buttons that are over here are for the Harkin electric windlass system. Aside from the winches that are at the helms, this winch you'll be using quite frequently. This controls the main coming in and out. And they are color-coded lines, yellow for the in-haul, and white and red for the outhaul. This is a two-speed winch, but there also is a fast and slow control here for the, it being electric. One of the unique things with the Genos is the ability to have your main sheet back here by the wheel. You can be doing most of the sailing or all of the sailing with everyone forward of you doing whatever they want and everything is in your own area. The winch position is allowed, allowing the helmsman to do the work as well as someone sitting in front of the helm to do the work if they wish. This boat is equipped with the reversing electric Harkin winches. 
and that's very, very handy. And the buttons are here, and there's another button on the winch itself to decide if you want it to be reversing or not with your high-speed, low-speed switches. There are some clutches here. The port side is the only one that has a third line, and that is the roller furler line. So you can keep some tension on your roller furler line and pull in with your electric winch or by hand or by manually winching it simply by removing the clutch that you want for it coming or going. When you use the main sheet and the jib sheet from the same side, you just close the clutch for the one that you're not using. If you want to adjust the main sheet and you have uh, the jib sheet already loaded, you can go to the other side of the boat and adjust the main sheet. It's, a con it's not continuous, but it's a long line that allows you to do it from either side you want. So it's up to you whether you want to do everything one side all the time or switch sides and do it. On both sides of the boat, there's a handy little locker behind the winches to accept the lines, the tailings from the main, the roller furler, and the Genoa sheet. And in this boat, or on this boat, I have another dock line just put in here and it's always tied off. On the Genoa's, all lines are led aft. So here we see some Harkin return blocks. We see the uh, Sparcraft hard bang, and everything's brought in underneath of a shroud. Everything is high-tech line and it's all color-coded. The side decks are very wide, easy to maneuver. Shrouds are inboard on the Sun Odysseys. Walk right around them. Tracks are inboard for the Genoa. This one has a 106 lapper on it. There's a bulwark or a tow rail. Pretty high stanchions, non-coated stainless steel lines. Very clean deck, even the hatches are all flush. The hatches also have non-skid on a couple of them. Here's an example of the reflective shade in use. The roller furling main is very simple. There's a block here, a block here, white red pulls it out, yellow on a drum on the mast itself pulls it in. This is the drum that pulls it in. First thing we're gonna do is pull up the swim platform. That just locks here with a little Harkin catch. Line goes in the cockpit. Then we put on the lifelines. Make sure those pins are in. Before you leave the dock, you want to see which direction the wind is coming from. You could always use the anemometer on the top of your mast, and that's showing me the wind's coming from over here. But it's also possible for you to look at flags and ensigns to make sure you know what direction the wind's coming from, because you want to use that to your advantage when you pull out. So if the wind is coming from my back, and I'm going to go left, I'm going to favor it on the right-hand side, because I have a little boat here next to me, and I don't want to clip it. So I'm going to favor the right, let the wind catch me a little bit, make my turn and get out. We have three dock lines right now. Many times it's four. I have one spring and one on each end. So I look at to see which one's under tension and which ones are not under tension. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to loosen my stern first because that's not doing anything. I'm going to move that forward so I can get to it. With the wind, it's going to take the bow and move the bow out. The way I move that line for the stern is going to do the same thing as the spring. So I'm going to take the spring and get rid of it. Once I do this bow, it's going to start to move. So I'm going to take this bow line and I'm going to pull the boat towards me a little bit to buy me a couple seconds to get aboard after I untie the aft line. Now everything is slack. I have a few seconds before the wind gets it. Bringing my lines midship. And the wind is taking the bow so I don't have to push it. 
back to the wheel, put the boat in gear, and I'm going to steer to starboard a little bit. The key in any tricky docking situation is to go slow. I mean, you have to be more than the current or more than the wind. Use that to your advantage. But you don't have to be in gear all the time. So I just put this boat in neutral, and I'm going to coast. And the wind is pretty much it's sort of facing me, so it's slowing me down a little bit. You just need to keep headway, just so you can keep the boat moving. So I'm going in and out of gear as I need it. I don't have to have it full speed. Just think that you want to be able to push off if you want to. Now we're going to make a, a corner here that's a little bit tight. And I just want to make sure the wind is on my side. And we don't drift into a boat on the leeward side. So we're going to split this one right down the middle. This particular boat, the 449, uh, turns on its own keel. So it turns in a circle very quickly. Gives us a lot of advantage. One of the other things with a twisty, turny marina like this, you've got to make sure that someone isn't coming in at the same time with a narrow entrance. So you do kind of scope it out before you untie. And there's someone else that's doing the same thing, a little blue sailboat there that's waiting for me to come out. So it's, it's smart that people pay attention. Once we're out of the marina, I'll pull the fenders up and I'll pull my lines aft and tie them off. For a short sail, I am just going to tie off the lines. I'm not going to put them away. Again, I'm going very slow, not very fast, uh, two and a half knots, very easy to control. I have the system here looking at me very nicely with where I am. I switched my computer on the Yanmar controls to temperature, which I like to have because that tells me a lot. Uh, if I'm overheating, if I have an issue with uh, water coming in through the sea strainer. Some people like the oil pressure, but I, I like the temperature if, it's, if you just have one choice. Just for a short sail today, I'm going to leave all the fenders on deck. Normally, you would bring them all back. We're a little overkill on the fenders today. Three would work fine. And then close your gate. Again, make sure these pins are in tight when you push them back. As we get out of this little busy harbor here, we'll just do some prep. Take all my lines off so I can have the winch available. All the winches spin clockwise, just like any winch. So all we have to do is get out and head it into the wind. I'll start with pulling the main out first, and then we'll do the, the jib. Try it out. So in preparation for pulling out the main, I'm just going to let these all sit. I have them in the cockpit right now, but one of the things I like to do is throw everything down below if you're by yourself. 
and that'll keep them untangled. But there's also bags that come with this boat, so you don't have to do that. Now my winch is clear. Move this to the side. As we get ready to pull the sail out, I slow down. I'm going to use my Windex. I could also use my instrument, but I'm going to point it straight into the wind. And today, I think I'll cheat a little bit. I'm just going to put it on autopilot. That's engaged. And I'm going to go over here. And I have two lines here. One that will pull the sail out, and one that will let it go out. This is the out haul. This is the in haul. So on the 449 that we have here, we have the electric winches, so I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to use this to pull it out. Letting it a little bit at a time. Keeping some tension on the out haul. That's nice and tight. I'm going to clamp off the out haul. Okay, now I'm going to come over to the other side. I'm going to make sure I have plenty of line for the furler out. Since we have a lot of lines in that little locker, we don't want that getting tangled. And we're going to do the same routine where we pull out the Genoa sheet. And we're going to have a little bit of tension on the furler line. So I'll preload the Genoa with these electric winches like to have three wraps, but we're not going to get that right off the bat, so we'll just do two. Again, some tension. Now that we're under sail, I'm going to shut off the engine by holding down the stop button for two seconds. And then I also hold down the on-off button to turn off the panel and the power to the engine for about three seconds. So now we're under sail and we can start tweaking things. So since I'm on the windward side, and this is where I'm going to be for a minute, we have a lot of traffic out here. It's a Sunday afternoon. I'm going to get ready to sheet in the main on this side. Again, three wraps is about what these winches like to see when it's windy, but it's not windy, it's not a big deal. So I'm going to sheet in the main. There we are. Tartan 34 Classic, that's a nice boat. Okay. So off we go. We're doing about 5.4 knots, and I'm just going to guess we've got about 10 knots worth of wind. Very easy to steer. Watch this, my pinky. Okay, getting ready to tack is pretty straightforward like any other sailboat. Here's my leeward line. Just made sure everything is free because that's going to pay out as I pull in on the other side, the windward side. So getting ready for that, there's a couple things I'll do. Just what I mentioned, the line's nice and free. On the other side of the boat, I've already got my main in the winch, so I'm going to take that out. I don't need that right now. I'm going to leave that where it is. That's all nice and clamped. And here we have the Genoa sheet. I'm just going to take the slack out of it. 
I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to do electric winch, so I'm going to do three wraps. Put it through the self-tailor. And that's ready to go. So I'll just uh, make sure I've got some good speed up. Doing about 4.3 knots, not much wind today. And I'm going to bring it around. So what I'll do is I'll bring it around. As soon as the sail bag's up front, I will uh, come back and pull it on the other side. So here we go. Unclamping. Undo this. Come over. And sheet on the other side. Done. Push of a button. As you know, 449, this particular boat has a, a shoal keel, roller furling jib, roller furling main, yet we are still able to sail nicely within the performance setting on a Windex. Take a look at the boats and you see the different width that those arrows are set. They come with three different settings you can put them on. Well, it's infinite, but you have three to choose from usually. This is the performance setting. So we're moving along. And we have nice looking sails. The Windex is just touching up there. The red is over the red. And we are a cruising boat with a performance cruising boat with nicely drawing sails, shoal draft, and we're pointing high. The sail has uh, two telltales on it, two pieces of yarn, one on the leeward and windward side. There's one above and one below. Right now I'm playing with them a little bit, but I I still have my Windex on that mark and I'm still drawing well. And the one on the top is also drawing, drawing a little bit better. But the idea is to have both of those lines facing aft like they are now. The Sun Odyssey 449 has a traveler. It doesn't have the German system, it has a traveler. And if we want to adjust, we have a little uh, clutch right here. And if I want to bring it in, I can use an electric winch that's on the cabin top. I can adjust the main where I want it. Could also let it out just by doing this. The 449 has a long cockpit seat, so it's very easy to be in a chaise lounge mode, or you can have a pillow here and lie down. This one has a cockpit table that's a teak table, and this flips up, and uh, you can have both sides or one side. So it's very easy underway to keep one side clear and have one side in deployed mode. There's also a place to put your feet and there's handles that you can hold on to. The boat has drink holders here and drink holders here. It can hold six drinks and you can put a bowl in here easy enough. The 449 has an emergency steering system, which is this plate here on the floor. You pull that out with a winch handle and you can put the included tiller in here to steer the boat if you had a problem with the quadrants off the two main wheels. The storage locker behind it is rather large and that's a good place for a life raft. Uh, you could also put your gas cans and things like that for your outboard in there. Since the swim platform is in the up position, the ladder is also in the up position. So if you had someone that was overboard and you couldn't lower the ladder in time, there is a ladder that pulls out right there. We're going to pull the sails in. So I have a little bit of traffic here. I'm going to wait for that to clear. Put the engine in neutral. Hit the on button. Hit the start button. Start the engine. Everything looks good, oil pressure is good. And I'm gonna head up. Still in neutral. I'm gonna loosen my jib. We'll do the jib first. Come over to this side. Actually, we'll just try pulling this manually.
leave a little tension on your Genoa sheet. You don't need the winch to do this. You could do one wrap just to sort of pull out of your hand. And that's fully wrapped. And now we're headed into the wind, so we're good to do the main. I'm just going to point that right into the wind. And in this case, I'm going to turn on the autopilot. And I'm going to come over here. The yellow line is our haul in line. This is our out haul. It's going to make a popping noise. Before I do that, I think I'll loosen the main sheet a little bit more. Sometimes if I loosen the traveler, that's enough. I'm going to loosen the main sheet. And we're going to pull in the out haul, making sure that the out haul is loose. Put another wrap around it. Put the boat in gear. If it were any windier, I would have had it in gear. That way we didn't drift off, but it, today is not much wind. Since I'm on this side of the boat, I'm just going to pull in on the main. Keep that from flopping around. And we're good to go. I'll clamp this side too. Give that a little tug. As we come around, I'm going over here. I'm just going to tighten up the traveler. I come into the harbor, coming in rather slow. I'm going to take the fenders and drop them. I start with the forward fender. Again, we have a lot of fenders here, which is fine. Make sure my stern line is free. I have a uh, midship line that I tied off. I'm going to untie that now. And my forward line is lying free midship. And normally, I like to have that line be a little bit longer so I can grab that and my stern line from the midship gate 